Hello out there, and this is an introduction for the rest of the video, which is going to focus on the acid etch that you see in front of you. This is a modified CRKT Amicus. This looks probably identical to you to, uh, to one that I've done before, and I'll get into that, I think, in a later part of the video, but what really happened with this knife is I did it for a good buddy of mine who lives in Greece. The Eleftheria Ithanatos is uh, freedom or death in Greek. You can see the Greek colors represented on this lanyard here. And then the word Volos is the city that he's from in Greece. So just something for uh, for national and, and city pride. A good knife to do for him. And I've done it once before and it got lost in the mail. Uh, my mistake, I was not very thorough when it came to getting the right address and just made a mistake in shipping. And it's been a pretty long process hoping that the original knife would get back to us. Uh, one way or the other, and it never happened, and so now we're, there is a new one. And while the focus of this video will really be on the acid etch process, and this is as close to a tutorial as I'll probably ever do, uh, I am just going to go over right here some of the uh, the things with the knife that you might notice, um, and things that worked out a lot better this time around than last time. So first and foremost, the lockup on this knife is great. So no big mistakes, no uh, no anno failures, nothing that caused anything to warp like the first time around. There was a little bit of lock rock. Um, I basically did the knife the same way though. You can see the reflection, really nice mirror on the uh, the blade, and the hardware came out a whole lot better this time around. Even if you can't tell on camera, the uh, the screws here are a better bronze than they were the first time. Nice muted look to the pocket clip. Didn't want it to uh, to overshadow anything else that was going on here, but uh, it does have a little bit of color depending on how the light hits it. And then up top we have a backspacer that I polished up as well to make it match basically the blade from the top. So I like the way that this knife worked out. Uh, it is in pretty darn good shape and even though the lettering might not be quite as clean as it was the first time around, it really works with the theme of the knife. So happy with it, happy to have this on the way to, uh, to my buddy in Greece and yeah, so that's the intro and what you'll see from here on in is just a few cuts of the process of actually doing the acid etching and the things that I did. I mean, you won't actually see the knife in the acid but you'll see each step as to how the lettering got put on there. So yeah, it should be pretty cool. And any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, you know where to reach me. I'll probably say that again like three or four more times over the course of the next few cuts. So, all right, guys, enjoy and be in touch if need be. Take care. Hello out there. And, guys, quick look right here at what I'm doing with an acid etch. Um, this might look familiar to some of you because I have done this exact same knife before for the same person. It did get lost in the mail, unfortunately, and it's been a, uh, a months and months long um, endeavor trying to get it back, trying to find out where it was, all that good stuff. And now I'm redoing the knife and just wanted to show you the process of getting um, lettering on a blade. So uh, I will show you the finishing touches, but here we have, um, well, here's the blade, but uh, we're putting the lettering on the, uh, the frame of this CRKT Amicus, and the way that it's done, or the way that I've done it in the past and with this, is I have all these stickers, and what we're going to do is a double layered acid etch. So the first one, you see I put the stickers on here, and then um, nail polished over them, and when the nail polish dried, I pulled the nail polish up, and then we have the word that we're going with. And, you know, I'll complete this design, clean this up, and then acid etch it, remove the, the nail polish, and then uh, acid etch the whole thing again, creating our double layer and a, uh, a pretty good looking design. So here's how it looks with the actual sticker still on it before I pull them up. So this is like the earlier step, and then this is the next step. And I'll follow up with you throughout the process as we go. All right, so should be fun. We'll see if this is even remotely interesting. Might not even get posted, but I figured I'd record it as we go just to uh, to see how it works out. All right, so I'll follow up with you in a bit, but yeah, thanks for watching, and here we go right now. All right, guys, so we are just about ready to start the etching. So what we have are the two scales here with the words on them that I'm gonna be trying to imprint. Uh, you can see that I have the uh, the nail polish all around the lettering and then just a little bit of like a frilly kind of pattern uh, in order to uh, to make it 
you know, just that border look a little bit more intentional. The tools that I use for that, I mean, essentially are just a uh, safety pin and a just a little blade. All right, so really simple there. As far as removing um, some of the excess, uh, if you do have, you know, at the end, you do have some fine stuff that you need to get in there with, um, you know, this little nail polish cleanup pen is really indispensable. It's fantastic, does a great job. Uh, you can get a little bit of control in just removing it easily. So that works really well. And then so do Q-tips. All right, so uh, yeah, just trying to get uh, as much of it off as I possibly can. You can also see inside all of the, um, the, the hardware, like screw holes and the pivot, I have those also um, nail polished. So uh, that can be a bit of a journey getting that out at the end, but um, it's worth it just to make sure that everything goes back together essentially the same. All right, you can also see that I have the... Um, the detent ball and you know the the lock face also nail polish just to make sure that this does not um, you know wear down at all with any acid you don't want the acid coming in contact with your uh, with your lock face at all. All right, since we're not doing the blade, um, since we're not doing the blade, that won't be an issue, you know. But usually, if I were doing the blade, I'd have to put um, nail polish on the back as well just to make sure that it still locks up properly at the end. All right, and one thing to keep in mind here with um, our never ending quest to get a very good result is that even though this doesn't look, you know, all that great at this point, if there are little like spots here and there, it's not going to be that big of a deal because that second layer of etching uh, should clear that up pretty well. You know, it should, it should all come together pretty well whenever you do that. So. Uh, the way that I'm actually going to put it into the acid is just like this. I've got this um, little piece of like paracord from you know the inside of 550 cord, and so I just hang it. Let's see if I can actually thread this on camera. I doubt I can, but um, yeah, let me just do this off camera real quickly because I'm not as coordinated as I probably should be. But essentially, we'll have these things threaded together and hanging in the acid right next to each other. So these will hang in the acid like this. All right. So inside of a mason jar, you know, hanging in the acid, taped to the side so that, uh, you know, they can't drop in. You want them uh, suspended, not really sitting on the uh, the side or the floor because you want, as always, um, look, I just see some nail polish right there I still need to remove. But you want, as always, you know, every part to be evenly etched at the same time. So that's why suspending them next to each other, you can almost, you know, you can, nothing's guaranteed, but you have better opportunity to make that happen there. So, that should work out just fine. And yeah, then the next step will be me removing these from the acid and removing the nail polish in order to uh, to do the second etch. So that's what's gonna be next. I'm not gonna show you the acid, not really because I'm trying to hide any secrets. There are no secrets. It's just uh, the etching in a uh, in a mason jar, but just sort of a pain to, uh, to move the camera and, and get a good shot of it. So it is pretty straightforward. But um, yeah, so coming right back with these getting taken out of the acid. So here we are and part one is in the books. So the knife has been removed from the acid and now you can see the lettering after one etch. The Volo side, this is the lock side, looks pretty good. I mean, my only focus right now is removing all of the uh, nail polish from where I want it to be removed and making sure we look good to go back in. Any inconsistencies in color over the rest of it will sort of be taken care of after this next etch, and then we'll stonewash right out of that, so that will give us our um, our final look. You can see on this side, the Eleftheria Ithanatos. Uh, there are some spots in the lettering that's not perfect. No huge issues that I can see, but just a couple 
couple areas where it's just not as neat as I'd like it to be and we'll see how that looks after this second etch and um, and the stone wash and hopefully it'll it'll clean up a little bit and come together all right so what I did with that first etch was I kept it in the acid which is a a mix of the ferric chloride and a little bit of water I kept it in for about 40 minutes and now I'm gonna go back in for 15 all right and so that first etch that gives you the um, the design you want that etch to be longer in order to create that depth of it and then the second etch will just be a little more topical in order to uh, to give that that coating and that look to the whole blade. But but your primary etch, the one where you make the design, like I said, should be longer. I'll show you guys since I have some right here. What I'm working with, it's ferric chloride. I buy it on Amazon, copper etchant solution. All right, so um, ready to use. Uh, the real key to all this, and it's not really actually a key. It's just a. Uh, uh, a, a tricky aspect of it is that you can really, really change the kind of results that you get based on how you dilute the, the etchant. If you dilute the etchant, how long you um, keep things in the acid for, you know. So there are a ton of different variables that you can play with. And the people who I've seen who... Um, who really do excellent jobs. I'm sure they've put the time in in order to figure that out and what works for them. You know, I'm at a point where I have something that works for me, so it is pretty good, but I do have the feeling that if I added more water to the solution that um, I would get a very different result than than some of the, uh, the somewhat harsh results that I seem to get sometimes. So anyway, there's just that. But uh, now it's about to get re-threaded and put back in, and I will follow up with you after that. All right, so here comes another cut. All right, so we are back out of the acid and done with stone washing. So another 15 to 20 minutes in the acid and then straight to stone washing. You can see uh, the aggressive stone wash that's on here. Whole bunch of little scratches. I like the look of it. Um, the Volos came out pretty good. The uh, the accent here could have been a little bit better, but um, I like it in general. And then this side, the Eleftheria Ithanados is going to be just a little bit darker. And you can see there are some imperfections in the uh, the lettering. It's not quite um, not quite as nice as I wanted it to be, um, and not as nice as I think the first time that I did this. But that said, whenever you're dealing with stuff like this, like the stone wash and that double layer does sort of uh, mask some of those imperfections. So while it's not perfect, it is still um, it is still just fine. And I think that the the look of the knife overall will sort of lend itself to that um, you know to, to that sort of uh, choppy lettering look as well. So I think this is going to work out just fine. The only thing left to do is get it back together and get it cleaned up. So that's what I'm going to do now. And um, yeah, I'll show you that final product and then that'll be the end of the video. All right, guys. So that is it, guys. That is our knife. And that is the way that I acid etch and the way that I got those letters on. Might be difficult to find those letters uh, anywhere that you're looking. So uh, I actually picked these ones out online, but I have a whole bunch of different letters that depending on the size of the frame you're dealing with uh, might work out pretty well. One thing I have seen, uh, Chris from Prepared Minds 101 did a, uh, a name acid etch on one of his blades like quite a while ago, a couple years back. And what he did was he used the big letters and then spray painted the whole knife and then acid etched it you know, just the letters. And then when it came out of the acid, he used like paint remover to get the paint off. And that worked really well for him. Um, I didn't really want to go through the hassle of trying that with uh, with spray paint. So that's the reason why I sort of stuck with what I did. But overall, I think that the, uh, the results are pretty good. And there are a number of ways, I guess the point here is that there are a number of ways to achieve whatever you're looking to do. And the best way to get it done is to experiment and have fun doing it. So yeah, any way that I can be of any help, any other assistance that you like, any other kind of request videos in terms of mods that I could do to help you guys out, uh, let me know down below. I'd, uh, I'd definitely be interested in doing them or at least chatting with you about them at the very least. So, all right. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and I will talk with you soon.